friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day 10 of my 2023 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be using the brand new Hello Bluebird Holiday Littles stamp set and I'm going to be coloring to match some pattern paper from the Cartabella Christmas Flora Peaceful Collection. So I'm going to tear out a sheet to use as my inspiration for my color palette and tuck that underneath my cardstock panel. The images are stamped on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm starting off with my reindeer, and I wanted to use some light brown shades for them. I decided to go with E51, E53, and E55. I'm going to start with this one over on the left, and I'm going to be shading him on the left since his body is facing toward the right-hand side. His head is facing forward, so I will do a little bit of a different shadow over there. I did the darkest on the left, but I'll add a little shadow with the E53, that mid-tone over on the right, just to add a little bit of extra definition over there. And then I'm going to use that E53 to blend down the body toward the stomach. I wanted the underside of the belly to be the lightest, so I'm going to use the E51 then to fill in the rest of the face and pull that color down on the legs. I did leave a little sliver of white on the belly and also on the tail. And then I'm going to use the same shades to do the second little guy up in the middle. And he is facing completely forward, so his shadows are fairly even on both the left and the right. With the exception of the face, I decided to do the same thing that I'd done on the other little guy, but just reverse that so his shading is falling on the right, and then just a little shading on the left, and then of course the highlight in the center of the body. I felt like they were a little bit too pale for what I like, so I decided to go in with a second layer on these browns. So I'm just taking those same three shades and going right over the coloring that I've already done. The second layer is always very quick and easy to do because I've already mapped out where my colors are going. I just have to add a second layer of those and that's really going to darken them up and beef up the saturation so that they're just a bit more vibrant and really stand out on the page. So once I have them all filled in, I'm going to move on to their antlers. Sometimes I like to do the antlers in lighter tones, but today I decided to go darker. So I'm going to use E43 and E44 for that. The areas are super thin, so I'm just using two shades, and I'll also use the same shades to do their hooves. So just a touch of that E44 first, and um, a tiny bit of that on each of the hooves as well. And then I'm gonna blend that out with the E43. And I really think this color looks nice for like the hooves and the antlers because it's very desaturated and muted. And it just reminds me of like bone or something like that. So I'm going to use the same shades for the trunks of my trees. So I've stamped out that tree three times. I'm going to put that E44 down toward the bottom and then blend out at the top with the E43. Next, I'm moving on to Santa's skin. I'll use E000, E00, and E11. I put a nice deep shadow up under the hat and those bushy eyebrows. I also colored in his nose with that darkest shade and then blended down his face with the lighter ones. And then I'm gonna do his beard using E40 and E41 just to give them a nice creamy tone. This is gonna separate it a bit from the whites that'll be on his outfit. So it's just a little bit warmer. I'll use those same two shades for the Yeti's white fur, just adding a bit of shading around his face and also on the underside of his arms, where his arms are crossed over his belly and then on the bottom of his legs. And then I'll blend that out with the E40 and I'm just letting that fade into the white cardstock so that will be the highlight. And then I'll do the penguins belly and face with these shades as well. 
Just doing that same technique, adding the E41 first, blending out with the E40, and leaving some white cardstock for the highlight. Next I'll do my reds, and I wanted a nice, bright, vibrant red to match that pattern paper, so I'm using R24, R29, and R39. I'm going to use that R39 first to do the red parts of Santa's outfit. I'm doing minimal shading just because the areas are super thin and so if I add it everywhere it should go, there won't be any room for a highlight. So just being very strategic with where I'm placing those darkest shades so that I still have plenty of room for that R24 which is going to really tie this combo into that pattern paper. And then once I have Santa all filled in, I'm also going to do a lot of these little accessory images since red is one of the predominant colors in that pattern paper. So I'll do the bow on the gift. And then I'll do a lot of their scarves. I think all of the scarves except for one I did in this red combo because I really wanted to have those bright little pops here and there so that it really makes those images stand out. You can see how nice it looks against the browns of the reindeer and then also it's going to pop against the snowman so it's just a really beautiful and festive shade for this time of year so I wanted to make sure I had it in plenty of places on these little images. And by the way, the six main characters that I've stamped out here for today's card are only half of the images in this set. There are 12 of these little characters in total, plus all of the little additional bonus images. So if I had thought about it, I could have stamped out all 12 and maybe made two cards at once. That would have been really pretty easy to do, but I just wasn't thinking that far ahead, I guess. But yeah, you guys could totally do that, and I think that would be a really smart way to get an extra card made in not that much extra time. So I went back to my E50 and just shaded in the white parts of my candy cane and then filled in the red parts with the R29. And then I'm moving on to my black parts of Santa's outfit, so his belt, his boots, and then his little gloves. I'm going to do with T3. T5 and T7. Started with the T7, blend it out with the T5, and then I'll add a little highlight in there with the T3. And then I'm going to use these same shades to do the black parts of my penguin. So I'll start again with that T7. I'm going to be a little more heavy handed on the penguin because I have more room to blend there so I can afford to have a little bit of an extra heavy shadow. And then I will start to blend that out. Also having that little extra heavy shadow is going to make him read more as black. And I could have darkened up this combo if I wanted him to look even more black like I could have used the T9. but. I actually prefer my penguins to have a little bit of a darker charcoal gray tone, so that's what I went with, but you can totally mix it up. Then I'll go with slightly lighter tones using T0 and T1 for the white parts of Santa's outfit, and also the white parts of the stocking. Just adding a little T1 for the shading, and then blending out with the T0 and again letting that fade into the white cardstock for the highlight. And I did the same thing for the Penguin's ice skates. Then I'm pulling out YR21 and YR23 for anything gold, so Santa's belt buckle and the little bell. And then I'm using just the YR23 for the Penguin's beak and the snowman's carrot nose. And then I'll use G quadruple zero, G zero zero, and G O two. And I'm gonna use this in place of anything blue. So my Yeti's face and also the snow of my snowman are both gonna be colored with these shades because I didn't wanna introduce anything blue into this palette. I thought the color palette was very pretty as it was. So I tried to stay in that vein. 
I did go with very cool toned blues and very pale ones as well. But um, yeah, I, I really like how they turned out. So um, just use the G02 for a little bit of shading and then blend it out with the G00 and then use the G quadruple zero. And then for the snowman, I also left a lot of plain white cardstock there so he didn't get too heavy handed. And then I'm gonna use these same shades for that gift, just putting the darkest color down at the bottom and the lightest at the top. And I will do the other reindeer's little scarf, just so we'll have another pop of that color somewhere else in the scene. And then I'm going to darken up those greens by pulling out G16 and G29. And I'll use that for the greenery on my trees. Just adding that G29 closest to the center of the trunk. And then I will blend out with the G16 toward the tips of each of those branches. And again, I'm just using the two shades because the area that I'm coloring in is super tiny. I'm using the very tip of my marker to get in there and pull that darkest shade out into this lighter tone and, you know, just try to stay inside the lines. It was pretty easy to do as long as you use your marker, you know, kind of more straight up and down. It's very easy to color in those small little places. So before I finish up the coloring, I just wanted to give everybody some rosy cheeks. I'm gonna use R000, R00, and R20. And this will depend on how dark or light the little characters are, if I use all three or just two. So I started with the R20 on everybody. I also put that on the insides of the reindeer's ears. And then I blended that out with the R00. And then any of the super light characters that might need a little bit of extra blending out, I'll use that R0004. Then I took a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and got that going off to the side. And I'm going to go over the eyes of all of my little characters that have their eyes open, which is most of them, everybody but Santa. <laughs> and then I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. So now I'm going to go back to that pattern paper pad and choose a couple more prints to mix and match. I'm going to go with this very pale kind of sage green tone. And then I'm also looking back and forth between a couple of different reds. I really liked that tone on tone with the poinsettias, but I decided that in combination with the other print that I had used for my inspiration, it might have been just slightly busy. So I decided to pull out this plain red instead. So these are the three that I will be using. So I'm gonna take the Hello Bluebird Gallery Frame number three. Then I will run those through my die cutting machine and I'm gonna swap these two prints so that the insert goes with the opposite one. So again, this would have been really great to create two cards at once but I will definitely save that extra frame for another card. I'll take some regular Scotch Magic Tape and tear off a piece that is the right length and then tear that in half long ways so that I can tape these two pieces together so I can pop this frame up with some foam tape and have it stay together as one unit. So the other half I'll just use for the other long edge then I'll get another piece that's just long enough for the shorter sides and tear that in half and repeat that same process. That just makes it so much easier to pop up with the foam tape and everything stays together really nicely. The other piece of pattern paper is gonna be my sky and then a piece that I trimmed off, which has white on the back. I'm gonna trim down with the Hello Bluebird Hill and Dale dies and that will be my snow drifts. So I'm gonna flip that over. I've lined the back with my foam tape now. So I'll peel off the parts that I need and then I will line that snow drift up at the top section. Just pressing that down into place. And then I will peel off the bottom release papers that I need to and line up the other snow drift. Just making sure that it's on there nice and straight. 
And then I can peel off the remaining release paper and I will add the sage green piece to the back to be my sky. I just added a little liquid glue to the back of those hills to make sure that it was going to hold on to that pattern paper so nice and secure. And I decided it was easier to kind of fit it on from the back than the front. So that's what I went ahead and did. Next, I wanted to work on my sentiment. So I put in a scrap of Lawn Fawn Noble Fur cardstock to my Misty, treating that with a Rabbit Hole Designs powder tool. And then I'm stamping my sentiment in Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink that works great for heat embossing because it's going to grab a hold of that powder. So I'm stamping out Holly Jolly Christmas. And then I'm going to grab some gold detail embossing powder and make sure that that is well coated. Just sprinkling that powder over top. And then I will flip that over and tap off any excess. And then I'm going to heat up my heat gun off to the side for about a minute. And then I will bring it to the back and then the front until that powder is all melted and gets super shiny. So pretty. So then I wanted to do the inside of my card. I'm actually going to do an insert for the inside of my card since I'm using such a dark colored cardstock for my card base. So I'm going to stamp that in clover ink. And I'm taking another one of the Santas from Holiday Littles and then the little snowflake and the Merry Everything sentiment are from our new December Post stamp set. I'll show you guys that in just a second. There is that stamp set right there. And now I'm ready to start assembling. So I'll open up that card base. It's another piece of Noble Fur cardstock that I created that card base from. It's an A2 standard size card, four and a quarter tall by five and a half wide. So I added that insert on the inside and then I'm going to do the whole entire frame here that I created for the outside. Just making sure that's lined up in the center of the card. And then I can bring in my images. I'm actually going to start with my sentiment first. I just trimmed that down into a strip and I'm going to add that across that center bar on the red frame. So I'm just making sure I have the same amount of space on both the left and the right before that glue dries. And then I can start to add in my images. So I'm going to kind of figure out the placement first. Just figuring out where I want everything to go because I don't want to have like two reindeer next to each other or the Yeti and the snowmen next to each other because they are kind of the same colors. So I'm just kind of figuring out the layout before I start to adhere everything down, just with the main characters first. And I knew I wanted to have these three little trees behind some of these scenes. So I decided that I'm going to do two on the bottom of the card, on the left and the right windows. So I'll go ahead and add those first. Kind of shifting them a bit and making sure I have them where they're going to be, you know, visible enough behind the images. And then to balance out those, I'm going to do the third one in the center frame on the top. So I added the trees with liquid glue, but then I decided that I wanted to pop up my main images. So I've added some foam tape to the back of each of those. I'm going to start down in the bottom left corner and add the little kind of prancing reindeer. I think he was so super cute. He's definitely one of my favorite images from this set. And then next to him, I'm going to put the Santa in the center. And he's going to hold the little gift in his outstretched hand. That's going to overlap just a tiny bit of that sentiment strip and help incorporate that into the scene. Then I added the Yeti in the top left, which made me realize I should probably add my snowman on the bottom right to balance that out, because originally he was going to go on the top of the scene and the penguin was going to go on the bottom right. So I just reversed those two and then I had the reindeer in the center. 
Then I'm going to give some of these characters the little accessory images to hold. I'm going to have the Yeti holding the stocking between his hands. And then the snowman is going to get the little gold bell. He can be ringing that up in the sky. And then I've got a tiny little candy cane and I decided I needed a little piece of foam tape for the top where that was going to overhang the reindeer's paw. And then I'll add liquid glue for the part that will overlap that image. And then all that was left was to add a bit of glitter. So I'm going to bring in my favorite embellishment, Stardust Stickles. And I'll add that to all of their scarves. Just trying to stay inside the line. Sometimes it can make the image look a little bit blurry if you go over the black line. So just cleaning up anything that goes over the edge with my fingernail. I also added it to the whites of the stocking and to the ribbon on the gift to the white parts of Santa's outfit and his little belt buckle and also to the bell in the snowman's hand. So that is going to finish off this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had so much fun playing with these holiday little stamp sets and there is another peek at the inside. If you did like it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and leave me a comment down below. I love to hear from you guys. Make sure that you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on if you want to be alerted whenever I post a new video. All of the products I used today will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below in case you'd like to pick up anything for yourself. And I will also put day 10 of the previous two years of holiday card series on screen in case you'd like to continue watching. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I really hope you had a good one and I will see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.